mystery awaits those who dare to venture into and explore any of the world's karst landscapes. However, the mysteries of our Caribbean karst landscapes are unlike those found in other parts of the world and are truly something to witness. What really are karsts and how are they formed? Karst is a unique landscape made of a distinct type of limestone terrain. Most karst landscapes are formed in areas where limestone and other similar rocks are common. Rainwater combines with the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to produce a weak acidic solution which slowly dissolves away the limestone. Tiny cracks gradually develop in the limestone and may spread and grow larger as more and more surface water flows through them. Over time, these fractures eventually increase in size to form wide mouth openings called sinkholes. As this process continues over the years, complex underground drainage systems and extensive caves begin to develop. The unique and spectacular limestone formations in these caves, stalactites and stalagmites, are formed when calcium carbonate and other minerals removed by dripping water is deposited in these locations. So karst is really the result of complex relationships between water, vegetation, soil, rock and the atmosphere. We are in the Green Grotto and the Runaway Cave, which is a tourist attraction. For the past 60 years, it's one of the most um, unique caves throughout the world and we are so Green Globe certified here. The cave or Jamaica itself, it was once submerged. So it's the seawater that erode all these rocks away and leave all these caverns. So these are natural form covered by the seawater itself. Why it's so clean down there? Because it doesn't expose to sunlight and you have little acid in it that prevent um, algae or in the vegetation to grow. And we have the sea and the spring water. So it's a mixture of water, so it's not a stagnant water. One such karst phenomenon right here in the Caribbean is Harrison's Cave in Barbados. Formed from a type of beautiful crystalline limestone which glisten in the natural light, Harrison's Cave is one of the most magnificent natural formations of the Caribbean. Venturing through the mile-long cave, one encounters an abundance of bubbling pools and deep streams, waterfalls and stalactites and stalagmites. In many places, the stalagmites have reached up to join the stalactites to form amazing columns. Harrison's is a living cave unlike most of the world, as water rich in calcium continues to drip from its ceiling and add to the karst formations. Coraline stone, it's a solid rock, however it is soluble, it is only dissolved rather, not by plain water itself. It must have rainwater and that slight acid content in rainwater, it slowly dissolves. And this is because the rainwater, as it passes through the atmosphere, it collects the carbon dioxide, then it passes through the earth itself, and by passing through the earth, it collects more carbon dioxide through the soil and decaying vegetation. So this creates a very mild interaction between the rainwater and the carbon dioxide creates a mild what you can call carbonic acid. It's like the fizz in soda. When this comes into contact with the limestone, it gradually erodes it. And it comes through, this is the what we call the solution process. It comes, it passes through and it filters. This is, this is what you're seeing here now, these cave showers. And these cave showers carry minuscule bits of the dissolved calcium carbonate. Then a reverse process happens as it comes through the limestone and hits the open air inside the cave. Since the water can no longer hold the carbon dioxide, it leaves behind tiny deposits and not visible by the human eye. And the process it takes, the experts tell us, it takes 120 years for one cubic inch of a formation to grow. So you can see it's a very slow process and in a very, very delicate formations. The unique climate of karst landscapes provides a habitat for many animal species. Long before one even sees the gaping portal of Trinidad's Aripo Cave, the sound of squawking oil birds beckons you to press on. 
Oil birds are rare and protected animals, and the Aripo cave system is one of only a few places where they can be found. Though they are nocturnal creatures, these animals are very active during the day, as the presence of humans usually sends them flying about excitedly in an effort to protect the ones that are roosting in the cracks of the cave walls. The oil bird is a very interesting bird in that it's a world's only echolocating bird and the reason for this echolocation, which is very much like bats, is just like bats, it lives in caves. So if you go in a cave, you'll hear beside the screams, you'll hear and that's the echolocation, it's bouncing off the walls of the cave. So when it's absolute dark, they see using echolocation. What also makes oil birds interesting is what they get their name from, oil bird. And that is they feed on the fruits of certain palms. And these palms are very fatty. There's a lot of oil inside of them. And they come back to where the, the cave is and they regurgitate to the young these very fatty oils from the fruits. The juveniles feed on this and they, from these fats they can really get to twice the size of an adult and it's all just a lot of fat and so inside of them. So what used to happen many years ago is Amerindians and even to recent times they used to take them and boil them and that would bring out all the fat and they would scrape the fat off the top of the water and use that oil from the fats for cooking and other uses. Besides providing a habitat for many species, caves are also a valuable source of information on human history, evolution and natural resources. The dramatic topography of this, another coarse terrain in Jamaica, was sculpted by millions of years of erosion. These rounded peaks and dome-shaped depressions of yellow and white limestone form Jamaica's cockpit country, so named because of their resemblance to cockfighting pits. The white limestone in the cockpit country is 99% calcium carbonate, and it's very, very pure, um, compared to the yellow limestone, which has a high degree of impurities within the white, yellow limestone. The yellow limestone functions as an aquiclude, whereas the white limestone functions as an aquifer and the purity of the, of the white limestone, um, its, it's um, high degree of classification in the, in the cockpit country for instance, um, the high tectonic activity, all leads to a very high permeable, permeability, high transmissivity in that it moves water through a, a, a unit of the limestone very, very rapidly and you'll get rapid flows underground in conduits, what people may call um, conduit flow or compartmentalized flow and people Local people tell you there are rivers underground. That's basically what it is. You can actually walk through some of these underground systems and see the rivers flowing through them. And that was made the cockpit country very unique. Formations like the cockpit country, which is a purely limestone area, highly classified limestone area, that acts as a recharge area for which water is recharged to the aquifers. There are no rivers in the cockpit country, but at the fringe of the cockpit country, to the north and the south, a lot of our groundwater appears to feed major rivers. Have you ever seen mountains as white as snow here in the Caribbean? Witness yet another fascinating karst landscape, the Chalky Mountains located in the mountain regions of Barbados. Devoid of any vegetation or sign of animal life, the Chalky Mountains are made of very dry calcium carbonate and are essentially huge chunks of crumbly limestone. Caves and karst landforms are yet another attraction for tourists and sightseers. However, improper human activity can have detrimental effects on these landscapes, destroying the cave biota. Since karst systems are linked to local groundwater supply, there is a risk of contamination and pollution of water supplies from human interaction in these areas. Furthermore, pesticide and fertilizer usage, mining and drilling, urban development, sewage disposal and even recreational activities can lead to profound disturbances and destruction of the delicate ecosystems of the karst landscape. Other than being just marvels to behold, caves are of great importance. They are a source of water and mineral resources such as calcite and gypsum. So, let us be mindful of the value and importance of these natural wonders to not just the environment, but also our own lives and well-being.